and uh, we appreciate you getting together. A few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of introducing Tyra Elsie, our interim head women's basketball coach. Um, circumstances at that point in time were that were turning quick and had not allowed Tyra and I the opportunity to talk about her plans for style of leadership uh, of our program. Although I felt we would get there, uh, I wanted to have a little bit more conversation for both of our men today, just to make sure that there was alignment and making sure that we had the University of Kentucky and our women's basketball program in the right spot as we both thought about it together. Uh, Kyra has earned and deserved the opportunity to lead this program into the future. Uh, with that, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. It is my pleasure and my honor uh, to introduce and take away the interim title and make Kyra Elsie the head women's basketball coach at the University of Kentucky. So congratulations to Kyra, to Dexter, and Jackson. We're extremely excited about extremely excited about watching into the future wow. and watching you lead the wild. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the head coach. Coach, all yours. Thank you, Mr. Barnhart. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to be the new head coach at the University of Kentucky. It still has not sunk in, uh, but I will get there. Um, but uh, extremely appreciative uh, to you, Mr. Barnhart, President Capilouto, the UK administration, and all of the UK personnel just for the encouragement and the support that I have received uh, thus far. And I want to uh, give a big, big shout out to our staff, uh, Nia Butts, Amber Smith, um, Coach Lynn Dunn, Daniel Boyce, and all of our support staff. Uh, you all are amazing. It is the people uh, that make Kentucky special. And our job as a staff is to make sure that our players have the best college experience possible. So our motto, we will inspire, impact, and influence uh, to make sure our players are ready for uh, life after Kentucky. Um, this is a big responsibility. I am ready for the moment. Uh, thank you to Coach Mitchell uh, for empowering me and giving me the confidence and wings to soar. Uh, we hope to make you proud. This year is for you, Coach. Um, our players and staff will continue to live by the core values of Kentucky women's basketball, which will be family, hard work, discipline, accountability, and servant leadership. Um, we will put a team on the floor uh, that you are proud of. So Big Blue Nation, I've said it before, I will give you my all, all along with this staff. Thank you. Now open up to questions, please raise your hand and we will um, address you so that you can unmute and ask your question. Then please mute yourself once your question is finished. We'll start with John Wong. Hey, this question is for Mitch. Mitch, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for doing this. But frequently the interim tag has some negative connotations. I know it's just been a couple of months since Coach Mitchell announced the surprise retirement. Was there anything else other than just making sure that you had all your I's dotted and cross, T's crossed as to why you didn't and, and uh, give Coach Elsie the uh, the head basketball coach tag right right at the beginning? Yeah, no, I, I think it's very clear, John. The, the, the challenge is simply that um, I would never go through and just hand titles out without having an opportunity to sit down with someone and making sure. It's no different than um, a coach walking into a home and recruiting and sitting there and say they they going to they see a film and they say that person's really good on film but they haven't had a chance to assess what their thoughts are and their plans are as they try and fit them into their program i want that same opportunity to have a chance i've always interviewed uh, my head coaches um, and had an opportunity to spend time with them and kyra and i although i've been around her for many many years i'd never had the opportunity to spend time with her and just listen to her talk about how she wants to lead and um, I didn't think it would take long, but I wanted to make sure that we were in the, in the you know, in the right spot and that uh, she felt comfortable with my, the partnership she's creating with me and vice versa. We, we got to work together in the years to come. And those are conversations that you need to have before you make sure that you, you tie the knot, so to speak. Josh Sullivan. 
Uh, congratulations, Coach. And uh, just a question for Mitch. Um, do you guys have any details you can release as far as a contract, uh, years, things like that, or is that something you're working on? Thank you. No, it's all done, Josh and, and uh, Kyra and, and, and I and, and our staff members finalized it all yesterday. It's uh, being from the, the last signature is at the president's office. And, and so he'll sign that and we'll release that to you guys this afternoon. Uh, Lee K. Howard. Congratulations, Coach. I just wanted to ask you, uh, taking that interim tag off, did you expect it to happen this soon, this early in the season, and does that change your mentality whatsoever? Thank you so much. Um, no, I didn't no, expect I didn't it. You know, uh, Mr. Barnhart and I met uh, when the initial news um, happened, and, you know, he named me the interim, and at that time, uh, the staff and I knew we had a responsibility to make sure that we were guiding and leading the players. Uh, we were going to put our head down and grind and give them the best of us um, so we could have some success this season. Um, and the mentality doesn't change. We have a job to do. We are going to lead, guide, prepare for basketball games, um, and make sure that our players are taking care of their academic achievements. Um, on and off the court. So that's where we are. So the mentality has not changed. Don Hale. Hey, Kyra, I'm just curious, what was your message to recruits during this interim period and, and how does making this official kind of change that message moving forward? Well, the thing about recruiting is we have great relationships um, with our AAU coaches, our high school coaches, and um, that is because of our staff. Uh, Amber Smith leads us out in recruiting. Coach Butts does an amazing job of connecting. Um, so our message has been the same. They believed in what we were doing at Kentucky, um, our style of play, our discipline, um, our family atmosphere, and stability with the coaching staff. Um, so they, are, they have been very excited um, about the possibilities of Kentucky. Um, and now that I am the head coach, it, it does make it easier um, uh, to, to get Wildcats here. So we are excited and we will continue to uh, work hard to build relationships to win them over. Dorothy Gentry. Hi coach, congratulations. Thank you. Can you talk about can you talk about what it means to become the permanent head coach um, in the backdrop of 2020, say her name, Brianna Taylor, and more, and also about joining the sisterhood of the uh, Black women head coaches, uh, women basketball in the SEC? You know, there is a lot going on uh, right now with the social um, injustice, uh, with COVID. Uh, we are all dealing with a lot as uh, basketball coaches as players across the country. Um, the thing about it is you have to be resilient. We talked to our players about being resilient. We have to be tough. Uh, we have to be flexible. We got to be willing to um, adjust because every day brings something different. Um, so, and our kids have been resilient during this time with all the changes that have been made and they remain focused. Um, and as far as the sisterhood, I am honored to, to join uh, the other sisters uh, in this business. Um, there are a lot of people that laid the foundation that opened the doors uh, for me to have this opportunity when you can go back to Coach Stringer and uh, uh, Coach Lock Maddox and uh, Coach Don Staley and Carolyn Peck. So there were a lot of people uh, before me. And as my college coach would say, you always play your, pay your blessings forward. So I hope this door opens. And now that it has, um, that I use this opportunity to impact other people and that they can see hope. Josh Moore. Hey, Connor, congrats. Uh, to have a Hey, kind of following up on Dorothy's question a little bit, just what kind of message does it send in this moment to, to have a, a black woman in, in place in, in such a prominent position um, at, at a school that has, you know, where, where you're, you're kind of like one of the forward facing programs of the, of the university? Well, I think this seat is not just a black woman. 
um, or a woman. It is a big responsibility. I'm very thankful to Mr. Barnhart that he has the confidence in me to lead this program. Um, I, I am surrounded by amazing people uh, to help me get the job done. And this moment is way bigger than me. Um, there are a lot of people that have put a lot of hard work um, and investment in Kentucky uh, to make it the program it is today. <coughs> John Hale. You're muted. <coughs> Mr. Winter, oh. can you just speak a little bit towards the, the financial health of the athletic department right now? Obviously, you all have <coughs> luckily been kind of immune from oh, some good. of the layoffs and furloughs that we've seen in other departments just as we're halfway through this COVID year. Do, <coughs> can you speak to what the budgetary situation is and, and how you feel about that moving forward? <coughs> So, um, I'm not giving you an invitation to tune in, but uh, you can tune in then and uh, we'll, we'll do that. I, I don't want to get ahead of that group and, and we'll, we'll certainly address it at that point in time. And let me go back to something Kyra said about what she was doing with um, her team. Um, just, just as an aside, um, the, the grades from the first semester came out. I'm extremely proud of our women's basketball team again. I think it was a 3.2, if I'm not mistaken, Kyra. If I'm not, if I'm in the right zone, I know I'm. I'm at, uh, they continue to uh, do very well in the classroom, and, and that is a point of emphasis. So we've been really good on the court, and we're off to a fast start. Um, and uh, proud of that. But I'm equally proud of the effort that our women are placing on their academics and the things they're doing in the classroom. And that comes from the leadership of the staff. So thank you for that. John Wong. Hi, Kyra. Congratulations. It seems like we've been congratulating you a lot so far this year. But as far as the team, uh, you're 6-0. and oh, And there are a lot of teams that have barely gotten out of the gate with one or two games. I mean, what can you attribute to, uh, to your start, and not only have you gotten six games, but they've been six productive games also. So uh, you and Mitch, if you want to, you can chime in on that. Is that just a matter of luck, or is that a matter of the planning that's gone into developing the schedule? Thank you well, thank so you much. so much. And, and, and as far as, as far being able to play the games, um, hats off to our medical staff, uh, Jim Maddaleno. Um, he has been unbelievable uh, during um, this this time with the COVID protocols and Courtney Jones who works specifically with women's basketball. I mean, she keeps us in line, makes sure that we have the rules, that we are very informed um, on what it will take to keep us on the court and our players and staff. We've had to make a big sacrifice um, in order to play and that's time away from friends, time away from family, um, not being able to do all the things that we would like to do, but in order to play, that's the sacrifice that we have to make. And as far as the games, uh, it does take a little bit of luck as well. So we'll, we'll keep that. Um, but we are uh, appreciative that we have had the opportunity to get six games in. We've learned a lot. We are a work in progress. Um, we are not a finished product yet. Um, but what I challenge the team with is 1% better every, every day. And that's in practice and that's in games um, in order to reach the goals that we are looking to achieve. Mark Story. Uh, congratulations, Kyra. Uh, two, two questions uh, for, for Mitch. Uh, was there one thing or a couple of things in particular you saw in Kyra once she became the acting head coach that gave you the comfort to go ahead and make this decision? And how did you weigh the benefits of, hey, we've got a person here we believe in versus the possible benefits of running a national search? Well, when you've got one of the best right at home, why would you leave home? And uh, I felt very comfortable with what we had at home. Um, we, uh, Kyra, when, when she, the, standing on the sidelines is a little different than, than the interview process. That took care of itself. Um, but uh, when we sat down, we went through, she had an incredibly 
well thought through detailed plan of the things that she wanted to do to continue to move our program forward. And, and I think as, as any administrator would want to know, what's the plan? And when she unveiled that, um, it became very clear to me that she thought this through at a pretty high level. And, um, and that it was that kind of high level thinking that I felt like was gonna be necessary to get us to a spot where we had a chance to talk about some of the dreams she has aspired to, Final Fours, national championships, those kind of things um, that our kids dream of and that, that she was dreaming of. And so um, it wasn't, um, I've watched Kyra again for, for years. I've known her from her days when she played. And we, uh, she didn't know me back then, um, but I watched her. And then to have an opportunity to watch her on the sidelines and be Matthew's assistant and, and to see her work ethic and the things that she did, um, it wasn't a hard step. It just, there were some things, some, some ribbons that needed to be tied up to make sure that we had it in the right spot. And um, she answered all those questions, just like I knew she would. Um, and uh, so I'm, I was very comfortable. And, and most of you all know that uh, I'm, I love working with assistant coaches and making them head coaches. We've done a bunch of that here. A bunch of our head coaches have started, came here from the assistant coach roles, and they have uh, been very successful. And, and as Matthew was, Mickey DeMoss and Matthew and and now Kyra is in that same lineage, you know, sort of that same kind of thing where she's on that same trajectory. And I'm excited about that. So uh, we've got a bunch of them that are still here and they've been here a long time. She and I were talking yesterday. We've had uh, several folks that came as assistant coaches and have been here and are very successful coaches of the year, many of them in our league. And so I anticipate uh, the same kind of wonderful stories for Kyra. Keith Farmer. Hi, Coach. Can you hear me? Um, I, I just wanted to ask: Have you heard? Have you been able to tell the team yet? Um, have Have you gotten some response from them? And, and what does it mean for this team to know that its head coach is here now, and you know they don't have to think about it the rest of the season? Yes, that's great news. We do not have to think about it for the rest of the season. Um, obviously, we still have a big job to do and stay focused and, and reach our goals on and off the court. Um, but I was able to tell the team um, and uh, the emotion and excitement uh, has me fired up. So they didn't know exactly what I was doing. We finished uh, watching film and I kind of called the staff up one by one and I was thanking them. Uh, for their service and uh, commitment to Kentucky. And I just happened to be looking at Kiki McKinney and she was looking at me like, what is about to happen? And uh, so they were giving all the coaches um, a round of applause. And then I said, and so uh, for the next couple of years, this will be your coaching staff and they jumped up out of their chairs and they were hugging each other and they started hugging us. Uh, so today was a great day and, um, you know, it gives everybody uh, the stability that we're looking for. And now we can put that behind us and focus on the goal at hand. Josh Moore. Mitch, Ron, a few weeks ago to football, just when you were, when, when some of the, the cases were maybe kind of uh, affecting the program a little bit there with COVID and, and they, they were kind of the decision was made to keep playing um, or those numbers not really affecting it enough to, to, to cancel the games. H how big of an influence were you? Like, were you involved in those conversations with, with Mark? How did you kind of navigate that? And just your overall assessment of how the season went as far as just getting through it. Uh, I, two things, Josh. I appreciate that. I, I want to make sure we maintain the focus on on women's basketball today because that's that's really important for Kyra, and this is her day. And I don't want to take anything away from that. So, uh, but I appreciate the question. I think the question, if you think about the medical piece of it, and she sort of referenced that a little bit. Um, I'm not a medical expert. And I've not been through a pandemic. I'm not sure anybody else in this call has. If you have, then you're you're a more amazing person than I am, than I've than I know. Um, but I have not been through one. So this is new territory for any of us. And I will tell you without the medical advice of Jim Madalino and our crew, I don't know how we would have made it through any of this. 
And I don't know how we're continue, we, we could, would be able to continue without his, his expertise on that medical task force. Um, I give Greg Sankey a ton of, a ton of credit. Um, he helped our athletic directors and our medical task force and our presidents find a pathway for our young people to And we've heard it over and over, young people want to play. They want to play the game that they love, whether that is football, women's basketball, swimming and dive. They all want to get and they want to compete. That's what they do. And so um, we've been in constant conversation with coaching staffs as well as um, those entities. And I think, um, you know, there's no, you're not changing the rules to fit the narrative. Uh, we're not doing that. Uh, what we will do is stay with the protocols, live with the protocols, live with the challenges that are in front of us and address them. And our numbers got thin in football a couple of times and, and um, we were still able to play. And I admire and, and, and will always appreciate the effort that our folks gave. And uh, we can talk about how we assess the season later on if we, if we complete it and work our way through that. But um, I will tell you, our young people, um, I feel like are in, in one of the safest places they can be. Um, there's no place where they're getting better care. Um, they're being tested in, in women's basketball, and men's basketball's case right now, three times a week. And if there is challenges in all that, they have immediate care that we're able to give them. And I'm not sure that you get that. You could get that if you weren't in our care. Um, does it require some sacrifice to Kyra's point? Absolutely. It does. There's, there's some challenges in that, but, um, there's also lessons in all of that, um, that, that things that you desire and things that you want to do and, and things that you're trying to achieve don't come just because um, you want them to. There's some things you have to, to absolutely work your way through and, and fight your way to get to. And uh, that's the case in this pandemic. We're having to fight through an awful lot of, of, of things. The ability for us to be interacting face to face with our team on a regular basis is really difficult, really difficult. Um, it is difficult to have team meals. It's difficult to travel. It's, it is a real challenge. And I'll tell you this, the staffs are tired. Uh, the medical staffs and strength and conditioning staffs who've worked so hard, they're tired. And they have worked uh, operationally to get this thing up and running is a lot. Uh, if you just watch what goes on in a women's basketball game and the way that they're, they're on the side of the court where the chairs are, it's fascinating. I just think it's much more difficult to coach the game because where Kyra might be able to say, sit here and I'm gonna talk to you for a couple of minutes. Um, that person is 20 feet away in a chair isolated and she can't talk to her because she can't talk, can't coach the game out here and you're away from your team. It, it is way different in coaching your team um, than ever before. I think it makes it incredibly difficult. That's why coaching in film sessions or coaching during practice or coaching in your, in your film room, really, really imperative that you maximize that and get that right because the on the floor coaching is so much more difficult than it used to be. In my opinion, I won't speak for coach, but I think it's really difficult. And I've watched it. Um, but I'm, I'm proud of our, our staff and what they've, how hard they've worked. I'm proud of our young people. They have, they have been true to the, true to the protocols and they've done what they've been asked to do. We were one of only two football teams that went through the 11 straight weeks and, and made it through. Our basketball teams have played, only had one missed opportunity between the two basketball teams. Our volleyball team, made it through eight, eight, you know, so I say made it through. There's an accomplishment in that. There is an effort that it took to get those things done. Our soccer teams completed, completed the deal. And uh, in the fall sessions, we'll go and compete in the spring. So we'll have all 22 sports teams competing in the spring session, in the spring semester. 22 sports teams will compete in the spring. And that will be an absolute load on our facilities, on our coaches and our staffs. But I'm really, really proud of everything that, Wildcat staff and coaches and, and student athletes are doing right now uh, to give us a chance to to step forward and, and do the things that they love. Got time for a few more. We'll start with Mark's story. Kyra, excuse me. Obviously, you and Matthew are close, and, and you're inheriting a successful program. So there's great rationale for continuity. But are there things you would like to do differently? Yeah. Uh, Coach Mitchell and I are very close. He is a brother, a friend, uh, a mentor, and one of the reasons that I am sitting here um, today. And um, he has 
built a great program and I am blessed to inherit a, a great team uh, with a lot of talented players, but I feel like I've been invested in that process along with Coach Amber Smith, along with Coach Nia Butts. Um, you know, there are there will be some things uh, that I do different um, as far as making sure that, you know, there's great relationships with the players, communication, um, you know, but I think we were so aligned um, in our approach um, that that's what made, made our coaching um, duo so special and we were successful. So um, the formula is laid. Um, it is a matter of continuing to build and putting my own twist on it. And, you know, I don't know exactly what all of those things will be right now, but I'm sure I will figure it out uh, as the season progresses. John Wong. Mitch, when you heard about the situation with Ryan and Tatiana at the beginning of the year, you probably reacted like all of us. Wow, what a way to start a, a coaching career. How much counsel did Coach Elsie seek with you on that? And how much did the way she was able to handle that situation influence you and, and your decision? Uh, you know, I, frankly, I didn't know anything about it until she told me. So I'll be real honest with you. She walked in and, she, and we started talking about discipline. She said, well, I need to tell you something. And she told me. And I said, well, that tells me a lot about how she's going to lead. Um, and I, did, I don't think that's why, that's not the reason why all that occurred. Um, but she managed it in, in a uh, right up front, right out of the chute, um, straightforward way. And uh, so I think that... Um, she, she's referenced it a couple of times in her comments that this is a lot more than basketball. And if we just play basketball and that's all we do and that's all we give our young people in any way, shape or form, and that's not what we're here for. Uh, there's, we, we have a little saying around here, John, it's called, you give us four, we'll give you 40. And that's four years of your life, we'll give you the next 40. And that's what Kyra and her staff are preparing these young women for is for the next 40 how to manage their lives as they walk out of the doors of the University of Kentucky. And the messaging to me early on was, this is the standard of which we will set our program and you will adhere to it. And, and when in your best player needs to be, to sit down to be, to have that example of, of this is what we're doing and, and making sure we get it right, um, then that takes a lot of courage right out of the chute. I will tell you that takes a lot of courage. And um, so I admire her for the way she managed it. And I think that the, the lessons are learned and, and they step forward. We put those behind us and we move forward. And I think that's exactly what they've done. And I think that um, we'll be better for it. Keith Farmer. Uh, yeah, this is for both of you. So I'll start with uh, Coach Elsie first. Um, just you're getting ready to play the, the Dwayne Peavy game. Are you going to be seeking him out, and uh, and then also following that, Mitch? Or are you going to be making this this trip? I'm sorry, I didn't. Go ahead. Of course, I will have to seek uh, Dwayne Peavy out. He is a wildcat through and through, and uh, a, a great friend. And uh, we will be in a dogfight uh, at DePaul. And you know, we started our preparations today, but that's why you play the game. You want to compete. You want to get better. Um, and these are the games uh, that will help us prepare for the SEC conference, which is the toughest conference in the country. But uh, no, it's uh, I'm sure Peeb is excited to have the Wildcats in town. It'll be a good one for them. I probably won't be traveling up for that one. We've got a few things I need to attend to here. And, and frankly, we're trying to keep protocols as, as tight as we can. They don't need another another body floating around there. So we'll, uh, we'll let them manage it. But I'll be uh, a wave at, at Dwayne from afar. So I'm happy for him and proud of the job he's doing up there. He's, he's uh, doing a great job right out of shoot for DePaul. Josh Moore. Kyra, I, I wanted to ask about, uh, I know Coach Walls of Louisville was looking, I mean, at one point looking for opponents on on Twitter and, and, and that kind of stuff. Just have you is there any communication? I know you're not going to play the game this year, but just about what they've had to go through with this stuff and kind of just sharing notes as far as um or with anybody, any other programs out there, kind of just 
how navigating these situations with the virus and, and, and when you have to pause and stuff? Well, like I said, it's an unprecedented time and you do talk to your colleagues and, you know, get advice, encouragement or whatever the case um, may be. And as far as Coach Walls, no, I have not reached out yet for any advice, but I'm sure um, that I will. Uh, he was my AAU coach and we have a great relationship and he has done a, a ph phenomenal job uh, with that program. And um yeah, look forward to following up with the series when the time is right. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. Again, we appreciate you coming on short notice. Congratulations to Coach Elsie. Thank you, Mr. Barnhart. And we'll make sure to send out the Zoom uh, and link information here in the next little bit. Thanks again. Congratulations. Thank you, and go Cats. Go Cats.